been over 50 years since humans first went to the moon. When the space shuttle Atlantis touched down on July 21st, 2011, it signaled the end of an era for NASA. That same year, the Bush era Constellation program had already been shuttered for being over budget and behind schedule. And so for the next decade, NASA would be forced to book rides on the Russian Soyuz rocket in order to reach orbit. But thanks to innovators like Elon Musk, space is once again part of the zeitgeist. And there's a growing confidence that we may soon reach greater heights than ever before. Mars, and further outreaches of our solar system. Musk and SpaceX think we can get humans to the Martian surface by 2030, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done before that can happen. So in light of all the hype, it may come as a surprise that the most exciting mission in the near term isn't to Mars, but somewhere much more familiar. And the lead innovator in the story isn't Musk or Bezos, but NASA. Today, we take a look at NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the lunar surface by 2024. We'll explore what makes these missions so much different than those of the Apollo era, and why, as it relates to Mars and the wider solar system, all roads must first go through the moon. In December 2017, on the 45th anniversary of the last crewed mission to the moon's surface, President Donald Trump approved a return trip to the moon, paving the way for missions to Mars and beyond. Thus was born Artemis. Artemis will bring us back to the moon in a radically different way. We will explore more of it and for longer periods of time than ever before. There is a potential for civilization changing discoveries, considering the vital resources like water and precious metals that are spread out across a surface area the size of Africa. The harnessing of the moon's resources is key to a future of sustained expeditions on the lunar surface, Mars, or further outreaches of our solar system. In addition to being a cradle of immense economic and scientific advancement, the lunar environment also seems like the best place to test deep space systems and operations in preparation for the first human mission to Mars. Located 240,000 miles from Earth, the moon is a heck of a lot closer than the 140 million mile or six month trip to the Martian surface. The moon will allow us to test and demonstrate a significant part of the mission before sending humans on the epic journey. And with success on the moon should come the critical infrastructure upon which a booming space economy will emerge. With Artemis, the technology, methods, and scope represent the best we have to offer from a scientific and planning perspective. The timeline is tight, but if we're able to execute, we'll see humans back on the moon by 2024. It will also mark the beginning of an effort towards a sustained lunar presence. Artemis will comprise three major missions. The program commences with Artemis 1, a robotic mission to the far side of the moon. The goal will be to test the performance of NASA's Orion spacecraft and SLS, the most powerful rocket ever built. After being launched into orbit by SLS, the unmanned Orion will be sent into Earth orbit where it will enter into a translunar injection on a path toward lunar distant retrograde. Essentially, it's an orbital pattern taking the spacecraft 40,000 miles beyond the moon. This mission is mostly about data gathering, but it will also involve the launching of 13 CubeSats around the moon for scientific investigation. These will help us gather more information about possible landings for future manned missions. Upon returning to Earth, there will be a final critical test of Orion's heat shield as it enters Earth atmosphere, heating to nearly 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about half as hot as the surface of the sun. Artemis 2 will be the first crewed flight of SLS and Orion. Set to commence sometime in 2022 or 2023, it will be the first time in more than 50 years that astronauts will enter the lunar environment. The crew will board Orion for the 10-day mission, where they will set a record for the farthest human travel beyond the far side of the moon. From there, the astronauts will capture the full globe of the Earth from afar as a backdrop to the moon. The trip will take the shape of a figure eight as the crew will travel more than 230,000 miles from Earth around the dark side of the moon before making the four day trip back to Earth. The primary goal of this mission will be to prove Orion's critical life support systems are ready to sustain our astronauts on longer duration missions ahead. It will also allow the crew to practice operations that are essential to the success of Artemis 3. Upon its return, Orion will hitch a ride on Earth's gravity field with no propulsion needed. Artemis 3 will be the culmination of all the rigorous testing during previous missions. The crew will once again return to the moon and make history with the first woman and person of color to step onto the lunar surface. The exact path from lunar orbit to the surface is still in the works. It could come from NASA's planned gateway system, 
or from a commercially provided human landing system. It's very likely a retrofitted SpaceX Starship could be the vehicle to set down on the lunar surface with the astronauts. SpaceX recently won the bid for NASA's human landing system, but it's currently facing legal challenges from Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, who also competed for the contract. In either event, NASA will rely on SpaceX and other commercial partners to build the critical systems for the Artemis missions. And Musk will rely on NASA to provide the testing ground for his future missions to Mars. This concludes a summary of the Artemis missions. Now that we're through that, it's time to dive into the foundational work. We think the more exciting part of the story is the systems and technological advancements we aim to deploy during these missions and immediately following them. We're talking about lunar outposts, sustained colonies, and in-situ resource utilization. The potential for economic benefits and scientific discovery is staggering. In part two, we'll explore the systems and technologies that will enable our return and the infrastructure we hope to build out with them. With the conclusion of Artemis 3, we will be one major step closer to becoming a spacefaring civilization.